Danny, you always did have a wild imagination. Still, you gotta admit, those religion tests were no Sunday at the beach. Mm, they were absurd, useless facts and fairy tales. Fairy tales like the Ten Commandments, maybe, or the Lord's Prayer? Any prayer, Kevin, you're just mouthing something. What exactly do you believe in, Steve, besides having a good time? At least I know how to have a good time. Oh, Kevin. I have my values, not hurting people, not stealing, not cheating. As for God, I'm not sure yet. Oh, you were pretty sure when you wrote your books on atheism. The Catholic Church, from Latin to lunacy, I believe was the name of one of them. What's wrong, Steve? You feel like you're whistling in the cemetery? Well, if you were so hot on the top ten commandments, why are you here? I mean, this isn't exactly Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. Who's Mr. Rogers? The guy who teaches kids to tie their shoes. Look, I am not saying that I was perfect, or even that they went about teaching us in the right way. I just think that they did it with the best of intentions, and I don't think that you can find too much fault with what they taught us or what they tried to teach us. After all, we were supposed to be different from other kids. What do you mean, different? Different as, as in being Catholic, acting like a Catholic, being treated like a Catholic. Acting like a Catholic? Oh, you mean wearing uniforms and uh, blessing yourself all the time? Going to church on holy days, first Fridays, every Friday, every Sunday. Not seeing movies that the Legion of Decency said were dirty. Christ, most of those movies are on TV now. So we had a few rules. It doesn't mean we were different. Sure, we were different. We were a minority. We got treated like a minority. Such language and coming from such a nice boy from St. Jude's. Look, why don't you guys just give us the ball back? We weren't bothering you. Hey, I got an idea, fish eaters. Why don't you come get it from us, huh? Hey, come on, give us that ball. Give us that ball. Go get it. Stupid! <laughs> Four hours in the emergency room, having my nose yanked around because some asshole from public school broke it in two places. Kevin, lighten up. You're making too much out of it being public school kids. Sure, and uh, calling us uh, fish eaters and mackerel snappers was just their way of uh, expressing themselves. Being Catholic affected everything from our family life to politics. All right, boys and girls. The presidential primary is nearing, and as I promised, we're going to have our straw vote today for one of these two gentlemen. Now then, all of you who want to vote for John Fitzgerald Kennedy, raise your right hands. And those of you who want Hubert H. Humphrey, raise your hands. Ah, oh, Mary Lou, why did you vote for Senator Kennedy? I don't know, but my mom thinks he's kind of cute. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, well, about you, why did you vote for Mr. Kennedy? Well, my dad thinks he's the best man for the job. And besides, if the Catholics don't vote for him, nobody will. Uh, Billy, you voted for Mr. Humphrey. Would you like to tell us why? 
Well, I voted for Humphrey because my dad said Kennedy's a rich carpetbagger. He's for Nixon anyway. Oh, and sister, yes. would you vote for a man running for president if he was a Negro? <laughs> William Miller. I don't care if the man is brown or white or green or a Protestant or a Jew or a Catholic. You vote for the man and his policies. Nothing else matters. Sister, what if the person running for president was a woman or an atheist? Hmm. Well, if the woman's beliefs were the same as mine, of course I'd vote for her. As for an atheist, Unthinkable. <laughs> <laughs>